We have seen VXP Weekend, and it is finally time for a Prowler build video. Hey everyone, Gerber here, and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. As I get started, I do want to mention a few things. The first one is that I do have all these builds. By the time you're going to be watching this, it's going to be in the builds document, which you can access through any through a link in the description of any one of my more recent videos. And of course, special thank you to channel members for keeping this thing possible. If you get value out of these videos or the build stock specifically, don't be afraid to click that join button below the YouTube video. And now let's go ahead and jump into the Prowler build. The other thing that I'll mention later is that dock weight is going to be incredibly important. I'll show you what you want to do if you're not going to have the max dock level and show you two different outcomes for that. So let's jump into it. The first thing I'll mention is that this ship right here is uh, partially built, so the build times are not going to be accurate. And all the build refit times and upgrade times, even for my first fleet that I'm building here before the first raid, is going to be with the old refit lab, old uh, retrofit lab rather, Naval Lab, Advanced Lab, Intel Lab, your upgrade times are going to be longer. I do have a different video out on that one, and I also have an upgrade times document linked in the description of my YouTube videos. Now, this ship is pretty decent, nothing too surprising. U1 heavy weapon slot unlocks at, at U1. Uh, some radioactive damage boosts, which by the way, just modify the base stat, so it's just going to turn this into plus 1150. It's not going to double it, which, you know, if you're curious about that as well as some survival bonuses and stuff like that um, in, for the ship. Some more damage here at U3, which should be pretty nice. In terms of the special abilities, we do have some interesting stuff going on there. We have a stun strike on the uh, cannon kind of thing here, which is going to stun different buildings, which that should be pretty interesting. Notably, you're not going to be able to extend the range of this. It, it doesn't make sense to do that in any way. It is a radioactive cannon, so all the ballistic ranges are not going to work. Just something kind of weird that you may have noticed here. All right, in terms of the weapons, this is fairly straightforward. You can't even put any countermeasures on this, so all of your damage ships at least, and I am going to build an evade flagship more on that and what to do if that doesn't work out a little bit later. So go ahead and throw on as many limited weapons as you can. If you run out like I did here, that's totally fine. Just make sure you do the TLC and uh, get the regular one, throw that on there as well. For now, we're going to put the heavy weapon on here, but take a look at the damage of these uh, limited weapons even is 14k with a reload time of 8, which of course is going to be able to be modified. Some other stuff going on here with wind up and splash and stuff like that. But 14k damage, 8 second reload. If we look at the limited weapon, this is going to have 15k damage and an 8 second reload. So the limited weapon, or the heavy weapon rather, is not that much better than the limited. That will be important for those of you with a low dock level later. In any case, let's go ahead and just throw that on here because there's nothing else you want to put on instead. It's not like you really have other options. Everything that's older is, you know, not really worth using. The damage is so low in comparison. Although I'm kind of curious to see what happens with this Black Pyre Heavy Launcher. Probably not worth it. You need 800k stacks and stuff like that. So, hey, we're just going to put that one on there for now. In terms of the armor, I usually do that last, but for your regular ships, and again, the flagship is going to be different, I'm actually going to throw on this armor now. I have no clue if it's going to be more radioactive or more ballistic based in this raid, but I do want to point out before you use the new armor, this has 90k survival and 3% of a damage bonus. However, the old armor, which you probably already have and can refit or scrap your ships because they are a year old now, Actually, maybe not. Just refit it off if you have extra. You don't want to scrap those ones yet. 85k survival versus 90k. Because you get like 140k with the U2 upgrade, that's no difference. You can use the old stuff perfectly fine. Of course, it's going to have the same build time. 8 days, 20 hours. We put on the new one. 8 days, 20 hours. The new one is like 1% less than that better. So put that on if you have it. Otherwise, hey, it doesn't matter. Use whatever armor you have that's old. At this point, I'm going to jump into specials for the damage ships, which again will be different than the flagship. The first thing is the engine. That's fairly straightforward. Use whatever the best siege engine you have, likely the Skulker engine, 45k survival. If you look at the older engines, tier 12.5, 37k, 45k, everything else other than, yeah, everything else other than the evade bonus. Know, it's all exactly the same other than the survival. So hey, Skulker engine, best one out there by a slight margin. If you don't have it, don't worry about getting it too much. 
Next up is the other limited thing that comes out with this. So it's the Whisper Wave Accelerator. Thrower damage, decent. Radioactive reload is pretty nice because that eight seconds is pretty high initially, even brought down to two with the uh, VXP on your ship. So that's pretty good. And the plus 30% combat speed means you need to have this on every ship. Special number three is going to be another one that is limited, and that is going to be the Radioactive Battery 2. If for some reason you don't have Radioactive Battery 2, Radioactive Battery 1 is probably your next best go-to option. 100% building damage and 32%, or Radioactive 1 is 83 and 20. So Radioactive 2 is obviously better, but Radioactive 1 is not that far behind if you want to use something from Tier 8, in addition to maybe looking around in the uh, Blueprint tab if you felt like it. I'll be putting Radioactive 2 on my ships. Special slot number four, we're going to jump into the blueprint specials. This is one that came out with the ship. This cost your regulator three. Splash and radioactive damage. If you don't have this, surprise, surprise, this cost your regulator two is the second best option, which is splash and radioactive damage. So, you know, the, you know, the tier 13 one is going to be better. If you don't have it, there are some other options. Special slot number five here is going to be the Super Rot Shells. The next best option behind these is High Pressure Piping, and this all gives projectile speed, not great, but whatever. Radioactive damage and building damage are the reason you're using this one. This is a pretty important special. It does a ton of stuff on here. At this point, you have most of your specials figured out, but there are a few other things that we can do. You could try and go on back to the limited tab and do something like evade and combat speed and, and you know hyper 30. You could put evade on each ship. And I don't think that's going to be the best reason for what I'll talk about with the flagship. You could also go back to your blueprint, look at some stuff. There are some minor radioactive reload specials. And the one I'm going to recommend is actually that one. And it's one that most people actually kind of forget about. It's going to be the auto loader 4 has 66% radioactive reload. Other options here actually might be better. Um, you know, reactive rod loaders it has 35. That's much lower. It's an anti-special. Flechette feeder is so low you kind of want to forget about it. Insulated charge capacitor here looks really, really tempting. So I think I'm going to go with this one, the 82% radioactive reload, even though you don't get a supercharge. And the bonus combat speed of 30% is fantastic. If you put this on this ship though, just keep in mind you have to put it on the flagship. Otherwise, Autoloader 4 might be a decent option for you. Autoloader 3, by the way, has higher ballistic reload, but lower radioactive reload. So I think I'm going to go for this one. The plus 30% combat speed does make it pretty tempting. Just keep in mind, this puts you really, really heavy on weight, which we will get to talking about here in a few moments. So there's the build for my damage ships, if we can build them as damage ships, because now we need to talk about the flagship and what the flagship build is going to be. Based on every single indication we have from Kick's Eye, the flagship is going to come out with armor points, which is different than the base armor points on this ship. Not really sure too much on that, but because of VXP Weekend, that's kind of what we're assuming. So this ship, you can see at the very top of your screen, has 56 million base armor points. I'm expecting the flagship to have about 10%, maybe more, armor points than this. What that means is every single enemy turret we saw in VXP Weekend is going to shoot at the ship with more armor points first. Every single one that has King Killer targets the ship that has more armor points at that time. So every single initial first shot is going to go to your flagship and hit your flagship and do tons of damage to that. And luckily for us, it's pretty much all accuracy beta accuracy, which means that we want to build our flagship not as a normal ship, but as an evade tank. That's going to be really, really powerful because it means my flagship can have like 92% evade and have most of those shots, which are again, all shooting at the flagship, they're all going to miss, or at least 92% of them are going to miss, and the back four ship will be maxed out on damage, and you won't need to do anything with that. Now, that's my inclination. We'll have to see in pillage if that is the case or not. Don't build the last special on your ships until then, just in case we're slightly wrong. If everything turns out to have the same armor points and the flag has the same 56 million, we're going to want to put Guidance Scrambler 3 across all five of our ships, but more on that a little bit later. Now, in terms of the flagship, of course, we're going to use the heavy weapon, at least if you have an upgraded dock just to start out with, and then we'll start putting on some other stuff. 
The weapon slot number one is just going to be one thrower, and that one thrower can be regular or a limited one, it doesn't really matter. And this is so you have the range of 76, although I guess, or range of 70, not 76. Although I guess the, the Flame Bell Heavy Thrower would count for that one too. So you really don't even need that for special, and you can just use combat speed on all of the rest. Because at this point, let's go ahead and jump over to our specials. Our first special is going to be the engine. Great, that's pretty straightforward. You know, your Skulker engine, that's fantastic. Special slot number two is going to have to be the Whisper Wave Accelerator if you put it on your regular ships because it does give you a plus 30% combat speed. You want combat speed to match. Special slot number three is going to need to be Insulated Charge Capacitors if you put that on your regular ships because, again, you do want combat speed to match, so that's important. Special slot number four is actually going to be the Guidance Score number 3, this does the same exact as Agility System 4, it just has a lower build time because that slow and stun resist does not matter in PvE, it only matters in PvP, we only ever see tactical fields in, uh, in, in PvE pretty much with the snowballs and stuff like that. Guidance Score number 3, best one out there, Agility System 4, only difference, higher build time, slightly different graphic. And the other few things we're going to put on is actually going to be a lowered cannon mount, and this is going to give you a ton of extra evade. It's actually uh, really, really powerful that you can stack this with Guidance Scrambler 3. This uh, minus 40% combat speed is the negative of that, but the plus 50% evade is fantastic. And the last special is going to be just evade upgrade. If for some reason you didn't use either of the combat speed specials at the top on your normal ships, you can use... Uh, Evade upgrade instead of the instead of what I have in these slots. Just make sure you have the same combat speed as your regular ships. Now, what I'm going to do here is load up the rest of these weapons with combat speed boosting weapons, which will make sure that I have the same speed across my flag and across to the uh, and, and the other back ships there. If anything, you want the flag to be one hair faster, but it doesn't really matter too much on that. Uh, as long as it's not slower. Now in terms of the weapons, all I did is I searched combat speed and I put on uh, any of these cannons here that give plus 5% combat speed and don't have any additional repair time. Generally, the best thing to use is actually the Siege Mortar D75B, but that has a range of 76, which means you're not going, or 85, which means you can't auto if you are um, matching ranges with everything, which is again why I'm using this combat speed stuff on this one. And then of course for the armor, we can actually use evade armor if we would like. But before we go ahead in our armor, let's check our movement across our regular one. This is up to 125 with 25 turn speed and the rest are 125 and 150. So that works out perfectly. So that's fantastic news. If you have the flagship just built, and of course the flag has the same base, you can just fill it up all on cannons, make sure the heavy weapon is in the U1 slot, and you'll do fine with that one. In terms of the armor, you can actually just put D5 EV armor on here if you would like. The only penalty with that is you're now you're not going to have match turn speed, which I uh, am, is a must for me. I really need match turn speed. I don't want to have a ship that has different than match turn speed. So instead, I'm going to throw on the D5E. You have, you know, slightly, uh, you're the same evade, just no turn speed, combat speed changes. So I don't recommend this one if you're following my build closely. I recommend matching the combat and spurt turn speed, which means I'm going to use D5E. The other option is, of course, just put on ballistic and radioactive survival, but especially if you can get your flag upgraded to you 2 before the first raid, you're not really going to need that, so it's fine just to use this stuff. And of course, make sure you include the heavy weapon here. At this point, we do need to shift gears into a little bit of an Excel spreadsheet and stuff like that to talk about weapon weight and what you should build, if you, especially if you're not going to hit Dock 20 in time. So if you all did not know, the dock weight 20 for the dock weight for dock level 20 is much, much higher than the dock weight for 19. It's basically 4.25 million instead of 2.75 million. And you actually need this whole weight here, this 4 million. You need to have that if you want a full fleet of the build that I showed you. The build I showed you right here adds up to 3.5 million dock weight, which means you can't run this in dock 19, and you need to do some changes. The first thing you can do is just only build three ships plus the flagship. It has to be three damage ships and the evade flagship because the evade is much, much less heavy than the rest of them. 
That's the first thing you can do, and you'll fit right under there if you just use four ships and the fleet like I showed you, which honestly, I'm going to be doing anyway. I'll try and have two ships at X1, one at U3, flag at U2 for the first raid, which is I find more important, and I have a whole nother longer video on that one. If you want to run five ships at a lower dock level, you need to actually start taking some stuff off. The first thing I recommend doing is taking off the heavy weapon from all of your non-flagships. Again, you need it on the flag for driving and autoing and stuff to match ranges. And then that in itself is not enough. You actually need to strip off four weapons on one of your regular ships as well, just so you can be under this 2.75 million dock weight. So again, that's gonna be really important for you to consider. Can I get Dock 20? If I can't, am I going to go Flag plus 3 or uh, Flag plus 4 with several of these four being less than full strength for the first raid until you can actually replace your, um, get your Dock upgraded? So just again to show you the final uh, decisions on this one, this is the Prowler build for the flagship. Note that the hash code is not a flagship yet. And note that if the flagship does not have higher armor points, we're going to need, need to make some changes to that. So don't actually equip your last special on your regular Prowlers yet. Speaking of regular Prowlers, the build is on the right here. This is what I'm going to use for my damage ships. And again, probably don't put on insulated charge capacitor yet. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and let me know by leaving a comment down below, and I'll make sure to answer any questions you all have. With that said, I want to give a huge thank you to those whose names appear on the end screen now, and until next time, this is going to be Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.